Hi, my name is Jessica and I'm an educator here at the Living Coast Discovery Center. Today, we're out on the Sweetwater Marsh, which sits on San Diego Bay's National Wildlife Refuge. We're gonna be talking about wildlife photography. I'm gonna go over some tips and tricks, as well as best camera settings for wildlife photography. And then we'll take those practices and put them to use out on our trails. If you're a photographer, but wanna break into wildlife photography, or just a nature lover that wants to learn how to capture wildlife through your lens, you'll wanna stick around. First, let's talk about tips and tricks. Here are 10 tips and tricks for wildlife photography. That's not only going to help you prepare to go out and shoot, but also give you the tools necessary to capture that perfect wildlife image. Tip number one is location. You'll wanna go where wildlife is, right? So going to a park, a nature trail, or a wildlife refuge is going to increase your chances of viewing wildlife. Number two is time of day. Some animals are awake at different times of the day. So sometimes you'll need to wake up super early to get that perfect shot. And that leads me into number three, know your subject. Doing a little bit of research before you head out to photograph that species is important. Not only will it tell you when they're most active, but it will also tell you where you can find them, what type of environment and habitat they live in. Also, are they gonna be on the ground or are you gonna find them up in the tree? Number four, be patient, quiet, and still. Wildlife is always going to spot you before you spot them. So you wanna be as small of a threat as possible to them. Taking small movements or even hiding behind a bird blind or some other object that masks you, that covers you. Number five is equipment. DSLR digital cameras are great for wildlife photography. Not only can you adjust a ton of settings within the camera, but you can change out the lenses. Some of the lenses I like to use are a telephoto lens that will get you way up close to that species, even if it's far away. And I also like to use a macro lens. This lens will let you take up close photos of say bugs or reptiles. If you don't have a DSLR camera, no worries. We'll go into how to use your phone in wildlife photography a little bit later on. Now going into number six is knowing your equipment. So before you get eager and go out and shoot, read the manual, look at some YouTube videos on how to use your camera, how to change settings, and also just going out and shooting, spending time with your camera is going to greatly increase your knowledge on how to use your camera. Number seven is camera settings. There are a few key settings to be in for wildlife photography, but we'll get into that a little later on. Number eight is composition. So I like to stay eye level or even slightly lower to my subject. So that may mean you'll be kneeling or even laying on the ground sometimes. You also wanna make sure animal is going into the frame and not out of the frame. So have a little bit of extra space in front of your animal. Number nine is keep learning. Watch YouTube tutorial videos on wildlife photography and join wildlife photography online groups. Here you can post photos and ask for feedback. This will greatly improve your skills. Number 10, which is the most important, is respect wildlife. You don't wanna be clapping and whistling at an animal to get their attention. You wanna observe them in their natural environment. Stressing out an animal is never worth the shot. Lastly, don't forget to have fun. If you go out expecting the perfect shot, you're not gonna get it. So just go out and enjoy yourself in nature. Well, now that we've gone over some tips and tricks, let's dive deeper into our camera settings. Do you shoot in automatic? If so, it's time to expand your range. Changing just a few camera settings will greatly improve the quality of your image. First, we'll go over some basic camera settings for a DSLR camera. Then we'll go over some camera settings for your phone. 
First, let's go over three basic settings, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Number one is shutter speed. Shutter speed is the amount of time the shutter is open, allowing light to enter your camera. This looks like one over a number. So one over a thousand means that the shutter is open for one one thousandth of a second. Cameras can go as high as one over 4,000 or as low as 30 seconds, depending on what you're shooting. So for low light situations or to get a blurred effect, you're gonna want to shoot at a lower shutter speed, maybe one over 200 all the way down to 30 seconds if you're shooting the night sky. For fast moving animals or for a nice sharp crisp effect, you're gonna wanna use a higher shutter speed. I typically shoot at one over 2000. This image of a short eared owl was taken right after sunset. Because of the low lighting, I wanted to use a slower shutter speed. Here I used one over 50th of a second. For birds in flight, I want to capture and freeze the image, so I'll use a faster shutter speed. Here I used one over two thousandth of a second. With my Nikon camera, the shutter speed is represented by the letter S that's right on the top of my camera. Once you're in this mode, you're able to adjust that shutter speed. Number two is aperture or f-stop. Aperture is the size of the opening that allows light to enter your camera. This is shown as f over a number. So f over 3.5 is actually a larger opening allowing more light to enter the camera. And a bigger number like f over 22 is actually a smaller opening allowing less light to enter your camera. Aperture also controls depth of field. So a higher aperture, which is a lower number, is going to allow for less depth of field, so a more blurred effect. The lower the aperture or higher the number, the uh, clearer your background is going to be. For this image of a bird in a tree, I wanted the background to be blurred, so I used a higher f-stop, which is a smaller number. Now for this photograph of a bird out in the field, I wanted the whole picture to be crisp, so I used a smaller aperture, which is represented with a higher number. On my camera, aperture is represented with the letter A, which again, is right at the top of my camera. Some other cameras, it's represented with AV. Now, once I'm in that mode, I can switch the aperture within my camera to make it larger or smaller. Number three is ISO. ISO measures the sensitivity of the image sensor. This is represented in numbers ranging from 100 to over 12,000. So the lower the number, the less sensitive your camera is to light. And the higher the number, the more sensitive it is to light. When you increase your ISO number, you're also causing more of a grain in your image. So keep that in mind. So when you're shooting in the sun, you need to shoot at about 100 or 200. But in those low light situations, you'll want to bump that up. For this image that's in the sun, I was able to keep my ISO as low as possible, which is 100. For this image in the shade, I had to increase my ISO to 1500. To summarize, shutter speed controls how long the shutter is open and how much light enters the camera. Use a low shutter speed in low light situations. Use a high shutter speed for fast moving animals. Aperture controls the size of the opening that allows the light to enter. A higher aperture, which is represented with a lower number, is allowing more light to enter the camera and create less of a depth of field, so a blurred effect in the background. The lower aperture, or the higher number, allows less light to enter and will create a greater depth of field, so a clearer background. Lastly, ISO. 
measures the sensitivity of the light. The lower the ISO, the less sensitive it is to light. So you'll want to use that in sunnier situations. The higher the ISO, the more sensitive it is to light. So you can use this in low light situations. Now that we know what shutter speed, aperture, and ISO do, let's talk about what mode to be in. We have our automatic mode, which is when the camera determines all of the settings for you. And then we have shutter priority, aperture priority, and manual mode. Shutter priority is when you get to determine the shutter as well as the ISO while your camera determines the aperture. This is good for fast moving animals like birds in flight. And then there's aperture priority where you get to determine the aperture and the ISO and your camera determines that shutter speed. This is a good mode to be in when you're going in between the shade and the light. And then you have the manual mode, which is the mode I typically shoot in. Here you control all of your settings. So your shutter speed, your aperture, as well as your ISO. This is a good mode to be in if you wanna create some artistic images. Here are some other settings to consider. Shooting in continuous autofocus is helpful. This will keep your lens focused on your subject even if it moves after you press the shutter button. If your subject is stationary and you don't anticipate it moving, you can use single autofocus. But remember, focus on the eye. Next is dynamic autofocus. Shooting in this setting will ensure your camera tracks the subject you are following. This is helpful for birds in flight or an animal running. Shoot in RAW format. RAW is a file format that captures all image data recorded by the sensor when you take a photo. When shooting in the format like JPEG, information is compressed and lost. Because no information is compressed with RAW, you're able to produce higher quality images as well as correct problem images that would be unrecoverable if shot in JPEG format. Let's summarize. Use shutter priority when shooting fast moving subjects. Use aperture priority when dealing with quick changing light. Use manual mode when you want to have complete control and create those artistic images. Use continuous autofocus when shooting a moving subject. Use dynamic autofocus when tracking active animals. Shoot in raw format to be able to produce the highest quality images. Don't have a DSLR camera to shoot with? No worries. Nowadays, your smartphone cameras come with some pretty amazing features. Let's go over a few. This quick tutorial will take you through some basic phone settings. First, we have the flash, which you can be in automatic, on, or off mode. Then we have HDR, which is high dynamic range for the best quality photos. Then you can choose to be in live photo, which will take a short video, and you can choose which capture works best for you. Holding down the shutter button will take a burst of 10 photos, which you can choose from later. There is an option for a three second or a 10 second timer in case you wanna get in the photo. If you wanna get creative with your image, there are a variety of color filter options you can choose from. Portrait mode will give you the same effect as that of a high aperture. Not only can you take a horizontal panoramic picture, but you can also take a vertical panorama picture. Just turn that camera around and it works the same way. And you don't have to worry about cutting off the top of that tree. When you're taking a photograph of a subject, you'll want to tap on the screen where the subject is. This will focus it. Hold your finger down to lock in place. Move your finger up and down the screen to adjust the brightness. When zooming in, 1x and 2x are going to give you the best quality. However, if you hold that down and move your finger to the right and left, that'll zoom you in and out. Once you're happy with that crop, go ahead and take that photo and it's on to editing. When you hit edit in the top right corner, it's going to bring out a variety of options. Because we took this photo in live photo, we're able to pick the image we want. 
From there, we can choose different exposures, um, light balance, highlights and shadows, contrast, brightness, as well as color, and some added on features like sharpness and vignette. Every phone will have different features, so take a moment and review some online tutorials on how to use your phone's camera. So phones make excellent tools to photograph things up close. For instance, these Harlequin beetles. Alrighty, now that we've gone over tips and tricks and basic camera settings, it's time to go over what you need before you go out in the field. So, number one is gear. Whether you have a DSLR camera, or even a point and shoot camera, uh, or even just your phone, choose one or all three to take out. And if you're bringing your DSLR camera, make sure you're bringing those different lenses. So this is the long telephoto lens we were talking about earlier, as well as a macro lens. And then I tend to always take a tripod with me just in case I'm looking for that stability in my photography. Number two is your proper attire. So you always want to dress comfortable, dress for the environment that you're going into as well as dress for the weather. So I always bring long pants, um, either tennis shoes or hiking shoes, something very comfortable as well as layers. It might be sunny during the day, but if you're out shooting into the evening, it can get chilly. And then another thing to think of is sun protection. So I always bring a hat and sunglasses. Now, I always bring a backpack with all of the goodies inside. So some of the things that I pack in my backpack um, is water and a snack, as well as extra batteries and extra memory cards. The last thing I put in there is a couple different books. I'll bring my wildlife photography book, as well as a trail guide or a species list for that area so I can reference while I'm out shooting. Now, once you have your gear all together, you're ready to go shoot out on the trail. Today, I'm gonna take you on one of our nature trails on the Sweetwater Marsh to see if we can photograph any wildlife. Now, the Sweetwater Marsh sits on a refuge managed by U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Because it's a protected space, we're gonna find a lot of wildlife here. Anything from birds to reptiles, mammals, and let's not forget, those invertebrates. So let's go and see what we can find. It's always good to scan the horizon for any movement because movement and noise are the two things I look out for while trying to find wildlife. Just spotted a great blue heron. This is one of our local residents to the Sweetwater Marsh. Let's take a closer look. Now when you spot something that's far away, it's always wise to um, get a good look at it with your eyes, then lift your lens up, spot it in your viewfinder, and then zoom in. If you zoom in before, you're gonna lose your subject. So we've just spotted an egret. There he goes. I love getting action footage of animals, um, just them in their natural environment. So there's a hummingbird in the bush right over there. I'm gonna use my telephoto lens to try to get a close up.
So we're gonna now switch from our telephoto lens to our macro lens. I can't wait to see your guys' photos. Feel free to tag the Living Coast Discovery Center so we can see what you got.